do it, Lord. And turn them towards you. Turn their face towards you, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to just teach them repentance. To teach them to just say, you know what? I don't want this anymore. It really doesn't make me feel good. I'm going to turn the other way. And that no matter how many times it takes, they're going to turn away from it. Because the righteous man falls down seven, but gets up eight. I ask you, Lord, to just cancel all assignments, supernaturally heal all their infirmities from their minds, bodies, and souls. Heal it in the name of Jesus. Lord, if I'm able to ask, if it's not selfish, like, Lord, can you do it quick? Can you do it fast? And while we wait for your timing, Lord, while we wait for you to do this, because we know it's all in your timing and your process, Lord, I'm asking you to grant them patience during these afflictions. Let them just feel loved, Lord. Let them just feel a supernatural understanding and peace that only you can provide, Lord. Let them find contentment, sustainability, like that just that just peace of mind, Lord, with you. Let them just be able to just find that and feel that, Lord. Meet them where they are. Meet them where they are. Because a lot of people will be running away. They're going to be running away from you, Lord. I'm asking you to just meet them where they are in such an undeniable way. I'm asking you, Lord, to just protect them. Protect them from all attacks from the enemy. If you repent, I will restore you. If you utter worthy, not worthless things, I will make you my spokesman. Let the people come to you, but you must not turn to them. For I will make you a wall for this people, a fortified wall of bronze. For they will come against you, but they will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue you and save you, declares the Lord. I thank you, God, for this beautiful time we have spent together, Lord. And I'm asking you to just bless them and keep them safe. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over their minds, bodies, and souls. And let them just have just this, this feeling, the Lord. And let, just let it linger. Let your presence linger on them, Lord. I want that every person they come in contact with, every animal, everything that they come in contact with, Lord, just bless them. Bless it. Bless their handiwork. Bless their hands. Bless their mouths, Lord. Let them feel the Holy Spirit conviction, Lord. And if you want to repeat after me, we can. You, you feel free to join in. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. I don't even want to open my eyes. Like, I truly don't. Like, I just feel, I feel, I feel so good. Even if it's 4.30, past 4.30, I feel good. I feel good. Amen. Amen. And, and, and amen. If you believe in this prayer, if you believe in God, amen. Amen. Just say amen. You're coming into agreement with the Lord, but only that you're coming into agreement with two or three. I mean, 300. I mean, not everyone on here believes it, but with you're coming on here with people who believe. And faith is huge. Faith is huge. It's It's so huge. I feel so on fire right now. Like, I don't even, like, I cannot believe it's 442 here, honestly. I'm really, really happy um, that I'm here. I'm really happy that you're here. And, um, I mean, and, and also, don't be afraid to pray for yourself. I mean, if you don't ask, you will not receive. I mean, don't be afraid to ask. I mean, I'll literally be like, yo, God, like, if it's in your will, can I have a $100 tip tonight? Like, I really need it. Boom. And not all the time, because he's like, you know what? You don't really need it. And it's not in my will today. He gonna do it. He gonna do it if it's in his will. If you need it, like, don't be, don't be afraid. Don't think you're selfish for praying, because you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't pour into other people's cups if your cup is empty. And I'm not even talking about just money, but it's like, Lord, like, help me not be so angry today, Lord. Help me just take away this anger, this depression, this sadness. Take it away, Lord. Honestly.
Jesus loves you, but finds that you're going on and on and on and on like Duracell Bunny. Yeah, I am. I'm sustained on the Lord. And there's a reason you're still listening to me, huh? All ripper. And it's not about religion, by the way, Jakey Aldridge. It is about your relationship with Christ. And I'm sorry for whatever church you went to or whatever people hurt you, but that wasn't the Christ-like way, okay? Because we love you. Like, the way that Christ is, we love you, okay? Does that mean that we support all the sins that you or I or the, or, or the past have done? No, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean we support it. We love you. And we want you to just repent so just like when you guys, like we, we all mess up every day. Just And when you go to sleep all the time, as many times as you got to, just tell God you're sorry. Tell God you're so sorry. Please help me take away the sin. Take the sin away. Take it away in the name of Jesus, Lord. Help me. I'm so sorry. The power of repentance is true. Like you're not saved by grace. And that's another message I want to preach is that this hyper grace message, everyone's like, well, Jesus died for our sins, so we're saved. That's That's not true. I mean, it's as if they ignored the rest of the Bible after that, because it literally says, like, if you love Jesus, then, like, you'll obey him. You'll, like, follow his decrees, you know? And that you'll kill your flesh daily. Because I still struggle. Like, the stuff that I struggle with, I struggle with anger. I struggle with irritation. I struggle with road rage. I struggle with cussing. I struggle with being emotionally driven. And that is something I always ask God to take away. Just take it away, Lord, you know? And you just got to keep giving it to him as many times as it takes. And then eventually, oh my gosh, all of a sudden you're not. And I know it's hard to believe, but just try it. Like, what do you got to lose? What do you got to lose? You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like I should go off of here. Ryan Evsters. Just read the Bible. I mean, it's 4,000 plus years old, too. Um, there's a thing called apologetics. Just go type that in on Google. I'm not going to sit here and waste my breath to someone who's just going to debate me and tell me that I'm wrong. Um, you could literally hear me preach till I'm blue in the face and you still won't believe me. So just go and go and type in apologetics. What I really like about apologetics is that it proves Jesus's existence. It proves all these biblical experiences without using the Bible without using Jesus' name, without using God's name, it will literally prove you, hey, look, in this historic document over in this country, in this historic document, it was written here. Oh, they found the remains of, of chariots at the bottom of the Red Sea. All these things are literally out there. So you just gotta look. And just keep asking him for change your heart. You know, I feel bad. I do, I really feel bad for a lot of you. Like, I've been exactly where you were. I've been exactly where you were. Like, I literally used to be a Satanist, truly. So I understand. God bless you, Crystal. You're so beautiful, inside and out. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. All right, you guys? Read the Bible, go grab it. And actually, before we leave, okay, all right. So today God was telling me to go to Isaiah 46, which was just weird because I was on the phone with my spiritual mom and, uh, or I was like sending her voice clips and all of a sudden God was like 46, 46, 46. And I said, Lord, why are you telling me the number 46? And all of a sudden he goes, Isaiah. And I'm like, okay, Isaiah. Isaiah 46. Hey, hey, Jakey Aldridge, I just added you or just followed you. So like, feel free to follow me back. Reach out to me because this is what I do for a living. Like I literally love to help people rekindle their relationship with Christ. Like that is literally why I'm a minister. Um, and so, I, yeah, just talk to me, bro. I mean, there's lots of people you can talk to, but I mean, you're here right now. Feel free to reach out to me, brother, honestly. Um, I don't know, maybe your name's Jackie and you're a girl and I'm saying it wrong and I'm really, I'm really sorry. Um, but reach out to me. I, I, I will, I love to help. I, one thing is just to invite the Holy Spirit. Every time you read the Bible too, just invite the Holy Spirit to come into you, to just come into that moment, you know, show me what you need me to see, you know, but just Holy Spirit, I ask you to just, just fill me up, fill me up Holy Spirit. So that's just tip one. 
tip two is just acknowledge God in all circumstances. I mean, like, like I said, when you're drinking your coffee, eating a donut, you got a really good parking spot, acknowledge him, thank him for it. You thank him in all circumstances. So be like, yo, thank you. Like, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for the $5 gift card that someone randomly gave me. Just thank him more. And the more you do that, just the more you'll just like, you'd be filled up with it. It's really weird. And also I recommend, I talk so fast. Even before Jesus, I talked so fast. My mom always, my mom always said that. I do when I get really excited. Um, but start reading Matthews. When you start reading in Matthews, in the New Testament, go all the way through. Because it, it just starts laying it out. Like it just kind of lays it out all plainly. Because when I started in Genesis, I really couldn't get into it because it was really boring. It was super like the earth was formed and my eyes would glaze over and I just couldn't get into it. But when you start reading Matthew, you kind of get to know everyone's names. You kind of get the gist. You know what's up. You know what's going on. So when you get to Revelation, you go to Genesis and you kind of just go through and then it's just way easier. Like it's really weird. It's honestly really weird. So while we're here, we're going to read Isaiah 46 and then I am, I, I'm going to hang up because I got a lot of mean comments on here. So, uh, yeah. All right, you guys. Uh, and I want you to know, like, you really don't bother me. Like, your mean comments, like, you saying this, like, God told me today. Like, you're just mocking me. I feel bad for you. I mean, I really do. Like, you really need to get right with the Lord because he, like, he smites down mockers. Okay? Like, get right with the Lord. Like, Jesus is coming soon. And I'm not, and well, everyone's been saying that for years. Okay, but not all the prophecies that are being, like, said in Isaiah and all these things, they're, they're literally not happening. They didn't happen for thousands of years. They didn't happen for hundreds of years. And now all of a sudden, oh, there's four red blemish-free heifers in, in, in whatever, what is it? Jerusalem? There is a... Uh, See, I'm not good with all this technical turn, but you could literally type it in on Google. You could go on the freaking news. It's there. I mean, Israel is a country. There's all of these things that are all happening right now. Like, it's literally in the Bible. And everything else came true in the Bible. So why wouldn't those prophecies? One world currency. All those things. The Euphrates, the Euphrates River being dried up. I mean, all of it. Honestly. So... We're going to read Isaiah 46. I don't know what I was going to say. Gods of Babylon. And, like, what I believe and a lot of other Christians believe is that, like, we're Babylon. Like, America. And like, not just America, but just, like, all the people that are, like, rebelling against God. So, yeah. All right, you guys ready? And just so you know, it's not about quoting the Bible. You don't have to memorize all of the Bible. Just so you guys know. God just wants you to read it. God just wants you to talk to him. And he wants you to just... To just believe. Believe in Jesus. So. Bel bows down. Nebo stoops low. Their idols are borne by beasts of burden. These images that are carried about are burdensome. A burden for the weary. They stoop and bow down together. Unable to rescue the burden, they themselves go off into captivity. And then I believe this is uh, Isaiah 46, 3. I believe that he's like specifically talking to us then right here. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all of you who remain of the house of Israel, you whom I have upheld since you were conceived and have carried since your birth, even to your old age and gray hairs. I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, and I will carry you, and I will, I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. To whom will you compare me or count me equal? To whom will you liken me that we may be compared? Some pour out gold from their bags and weigh out silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith to make it into a god. And they bow down and worship it. They lift it to their shoulders and carry it. They set, up, they set it up in its place, and there it stands. From that spot, it cannot be moved. Though one cries out to it, it does not answer. It cannot save him from his troubles. Remember this, fix it in mind. Take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. You hear that? 
to all y'all people that don't believe in God, I am God. Not me, but like that's what he says in here. Like he is God, he's a jealous God. He gets pissed off, honestly. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. From the east, I summon a bird of prey. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said that I will bring about, what I have planned that I will do. Listen to me. You hear this? I feel like this is a lot for some of y'all. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted, you who are far from righteousness. I am bringing my righteousness near and it is not far away and my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion, my splendor to Israel. So yeah, when he told me to read that today, I was like, wow, that uh, really like, it hit me hard because I've been all like kind of worried. Oh gosh, what's gonna happen? Like, how am I gonna do this? Like, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about my custody battle. God's like, hey, don't worry about it. I will sustain you. I've been talking to you since you out conceived you at birth, you know, things like that. And yeah, Ryan Esters, he did tell me to read it. And you won't understand until you're filled with the Holy Spirit. But you have a really nice smile. And I just want to say God bless you. From the bottom of my heart. I mean, there's a reason you're still here. Do you just like come on here and just like troll people and be really mean? Like, I'm genuinely just wondering. Because you have 57,000 followers and 1.4 million likes. And I just hope that you use your platform in just a good way, you know? So just know that I love you, God bless you, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. And so yeah, I think you guys are all awesome. All of you, even the people who are being really mean. Well, you're mocking me for one, Ryan, because I've read several of your other comments and I just haven't responded. Um, but yeah, you won't understand until, uh, you like have your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears opened. Cause I used to think people like me were nuts too. I used to literally run the opposite way of them. I would, uh, I remember back in the day when I was in like fifth grade, there was a tornado, tornado drill. It was actually a warning and we were all in the bathroom and a lot of the kids I went to school with were super religious and Catholic and stuff like that. And I was like, Hey you guys, like, I don't know.